Member Saanich North in the Islands. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. The Government of Canada says to British Columbia, trust us, we can properly manage natural resources on your coast. Yet, we had some insight earlier this week of the appalling job done by the Federal Department of Fisheries and Oceans. Canada's Commissioner of the Environment and Sustainable Development released a new report about how the DFO has been managing the salmon farming industry. Per determination, the federal government has not adequately managed the risks associated with salmon farming, putting wild salmon at risk. I quote from the report, we concluded that Fisheries and Oceans Canada did not adequately manage the risks associated with salmon aquaculture, consistent with its mandate to protect wild fish. In a CBC radio interview, the host pressed Julie Galfan for examples of how the DFO is not doing its job. She responded, quote, there are so many, it's really quite disturbing, end quote. Then she went into great detail. Our government must stop deferring to the DFO. They cannot be trusted with their responsibility for the open net aquaculture industry. Through you, Honourable Speaker, to the Minister of Agriculture, when is she going to announce the transition plan for getting open net pens off our coast? Minister of Agriculture. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the question. It's obviously a, a very, very important topic, something that our government is very concerned about, and we're doing everything we can at this point to move this file forward in a positive way. One of the things that we're committed to is helping the aquaculture industry transition to closed containment where possible. We know that on Vancouver Island, there's a land-based closed containment operation that's doing its best. We have been talking with tech companies, one on Vancouver Island again, that's looking at closed, contain closed containment ocean-based. We also met recently with a Norwegian company who's looking at the same technology. Around the world, we're seeing technologies develop that will help assist us in either having closed containment in ocean or on land, and we're very supportive uh, to get the uh, aquaculture industry there where, where possible. But I think that the member must also understand that the federal government holds most of the cards on this file, and we are doing every part, everything that we can from our position, but the federal government has to meet us at the table. Sandwich North in the Islands on a supplemental. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. And uh, uh, it, there's no question that the federal government holds, uh, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans holds a lot of cards when it comes uh, to open net pen uh, fishery, uh, fish farms. On land, though, British Columbia owns a lot more of the uh, responsibility uh, than perhaps has been accepted. We have an incredible of opportunity in front of us and must. Uh, must address a significant threat to our wild salmon by embracing innovation and new technology. As was pointed out, there are several, uh, several prospects, large-scale uh, land-based aquaculture, not only here in British Columbia, but around North America. In Washington State, Governor Jay Inslee has signed legislation to phase out marine farming of Atlantic salmon and other non-native species by 2022. On the east coast of North America, we see significant investments taking place into land-based aquaculture. Atlantic Canada is taking de de decisive steps. We need to be a leader in this transition. We have BC companies that have the technology to make this economically viable and help support a transition to bring stable jobs to numerous communities on our coast, Honourable Speaker. My question is again to the Minister of Agriculture. We need a plan. We cannot be late to the game laggards. When are we going to see a plan to how we're moving this uh, transitioning this industry onto land. Minister of Agriculture. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and thanks again for the question. Of course, this is an important topic, and our government has stated numerous times that we are committed to helping industry transition because there's technology that's developing um, constantly around the world to help, help other countries get to this uh, as well. But I just want to reiterate that um, you have to look at the whole picture when we're talking about the health of wild salmon. And with that, we, our government's absolutely committed to protecting the health. We have to work with the federal government on that respect. So there is, there absolutely is a place for close containment in this equation, but we need to look at the whole picture. There's a lot of things that are affecting the health of our wild salmon. And uh, the issue cannot be fully addressed without full engagement and leadership from the federal government. 